in this protest at Aintree. Sure, thank you. And thank, first of all, thanks for having us on. So I, I think in the UK we can be rightly proud of ourselves as being a nation of animal lovers. Um, and uh, the, the behaviour towards animals, though, sometimes falls short of those values. And, that, and that's particularly in the food system, of course, uh, but also in events like the Grand National. As you said, Envoy Special has already died at this year's Grand National meeting. We think that's harmful. We think it's wrong. We think the majority of the British public support our views and feel the same. Uh, and we'd really like to call on people to come down and support us in sort of disrupting the race, because what we want to do is, is shine a spotlight on the treatment of animals in this country uh, and, and show that it, we've actually got a broken relationship with animals and the natural world, and that's at the centre of a lot of our problems, such as the climate crisis. All right, I want to, I want to go into some of those points in more detail, but first I want to get to Kevin and get his response to that and hear a little bit about your uh, knowledge and expertise in this. And obviously you're probably quite used to uh, coming up against this type of debate. Hi, Rosanna. Yeah, firstly, thank you very much for the opportunity to come on. It's much appreciated um, and very happy to talk about this race, horse racing in general. Um, look, it's, it's interesting that Alex feels that the majority of the British public would be on his side of this argument. Um, as far as I'm aware, they're expecting maybe 100 or 200 protesters. Alex can correct me if, if, I'm, if I'm off the mark there. But five to 600 million people all around the world will take time out of their day to watch this race on Saturday. You know, the race is not perfect um, and it isn't without risk. No one would ever claim that. But the fact that five to 600 million people are going to tune in to watch it live, I feel is an extremely strong vote of confidence from the court of public opinion. Does the fact that five to 600 million people are tuning in to watch this and it has so much support um, uh, give uh, Alex some ammunition to raise issues about animal awareness. Isn't it something that we should keep in the conversation about the race if so many people are watching? Absolutely, Rosanna. Look, racing itself is on this and has been on it for decades. Look, it's very important for those that don't watch horse racing every day to know that the Grand National is a very different race this coming Saturday than what it was in relatively recent times. Like, if you go on YouTube and watch Red Rum winning the Grand National in the 1970s, like what you see is, is a completely different spectacle to what we see on Saturday. You know, the fences have been massively modified. Everything around the race has been modified with a view to reducing avoidable risk. And they've had very good results in looking to achieve that. And the most recent changes were made to the fences after the 2012 renewal. And since then, like the race has, has never been safer. The fatality rate has dropped to 1.1%. It's never been lower than that. The average number of fallers in those nine renewals has dropped to five compared to 11.6 in the previous renewals prior to those changes. So nobody made horse racing make these changes, Rosanna. This was all self-driven in the best interests of reducing avoidable risk. The problem that we have and that we have in life is that risk can never be eliminated. It's about us as intelligent, reasonable people deciding what qualifies as acceptable risk. We do this in our mm. lives every single day. Yeah. And across the board in British horse racing, mm. the fatality rate has reduced to 0.2% of all runners. Kevin. And look, trust me when I say that there's, there's a whole bunch of people that are working to keep that coming down, but it's reduced by one third in the last 20 years, Rosanna. And it's very important to emphasize that, that we are on this. And we care more than anyone about reducing that number as low as we possibly can. I'm hearing some very, very clear action that has been taken. There's some very clear statistics. I want to put it uh, to, to Alex here in the studio. You can hear compromises being made. Not in compromises, actual care for animal welfare and safety. People in the horse racing industry, many do really care for the welfare of horses. Don't you agree with that? I do agree with that. But what's Kevin said there is that uh, no one cares more. But actually, we do, because we don't want any fatalities on the course. And look, a, a horse dies every other day in British horse racing, and that's just on the tracks. Back in the stables, back in the paddocks, more die. Uh, 2,000 of the ho you know, 2,000 horses end up in slaughterhouses. Like, 50% of those have racing passports, you know. This is what happens to those horses who can't run fast enough. So, for example, the jockey who was the whistleblower, who, who, who told about the, um, the, the shooting of young horses, foals, 18 of them, who, who couldn't run fast enough to make a profit for the industry. What we're about and what we're trying to shine a light on 
is that people making profit off of animals is wrong. And that's in the food system, in horse racing, anywhere. You know, we're, we're in 2023, you know, like, we've got rid of dog fighting. You know, we're trying to get rid of, you know, fox, you know, fox hunting, you know, like, horse Hold racing on, is cruel and, and for, the, for the animals, you know. And it's as much as Kevin would like to think, you know, all of these jockeys, all of these things really care, actually, if there's no money involved, they wouldn't care. Kevin. I can't, I can't believe that, that Alex has just mentioned dog fighting and tried to compare that to horse racing. Like, come on, what, what are we doing here? Um, like, in terms of um, it all being about profit, like, again, it shows a, a lack of understanding of horse racing because, look, racehorse ownership in itself, like, is a huge loss-making endeavour. Like, across the industry, OK, in British horse racing, a racehorse owner can expect to get back, on average, about 20% of the money they invest in, they don't do it to make money. They do it because they love the sport, they love the horses, they love the experiences that being involved in the sport can give them. If they go in thinking they're going to make a profit, they're foolish because it's just not the case in the vast majority of cases. This isn't about a profit-making exercise. It's the love of a sport. And like in terms of you want to talk about care, you know, I'd be interested to hear if, if Alex has ever been in a racing yard on a stud farm and seen the level of care these animals get. Like, this, like there is no animal on the planet that gets a higher level of care every day from the very beginning, from well, when they're let's folds ask up until Alex, after they retired. Alex, have you been on a stud farm? Have you been to one of these racing facilities? I've been to racing facilities. I've been on farms as well, sort of like dairy farms, sheep farms. I've interviewed a lot of these people uh, who what, work what with race, animals. What racing, what racing stables have you been in, Alex? As a matter of interest, I'd be familiar with, with most trainers in the UK. Yeah, those are those around Newcastle where I live. Um, but Which what, ones? I, what I'd like to get to, what I'd like to get to the point of being, is uh, that, you, you can't name, you can't name one, no. Well, for, for example, so my, 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 I understand no. the atten the, I, I understand the attraction and the attachment that people have to horse racing. My mum actually had, you know, she worked in a betting shop when I was growing up. She had, she had a seventieth share in a horse. Like, you know, she she went to um, Epsom Derby for her Hindu when she got remarried. I understand the the attachment that people have to horse racing. But what we're saying is that no horse should die. You know, we're, we're a nation of animal lovers. We're really proud Alex, of our... every horse we're dies. We're really proud of our every horse dies. relationship you, you with animals. Hang on a second. So, sorry, dying. Alex. Every... So what are Kev, Kevin shouting out there that every horse <laughs> dies, but there's, there's death every at the end of a natural dies. life, all... isn't there? And then there yeah. is we death all, for every probably... steeple. I mean, let's talk about, let's talk no, about we, the we horse all, that died today. We all die, Rosanna. Every animal dies, but not every animal lives with the quality of life that a, that a racehorse gets. Like, look, I, I own a stud farm here. Like, we, we have brood mares, we breed thoroughbreds. You know, I have a bunch of horses outside from one day old up to a 22-year-old retired mare. Like, like, this is my life. You yeah. know, when I, I, when I finish this call, I'll be going outside to check them before I go to bed. When I wake up in the morning, that'll be the first thing I see in the morning after my wife. You know, the level of care, these are very high-maintenance animals. I right, hear you, I, Kevin, Kevin, I hear you. La just last week, I was mucking out four horses four mornings of the week, mm -hmm. spoiling them rotten. There's nothing I love more than horses. But I think I mm -hmm. represent a sort of a fair, decent proportion of the British public, and then I eat meat. Um, I ride horses, and not everyone rides horses, of course, but I, you know, I can also respect that the Grand National is this big spectacle that people enjoy going to, but I also care about animals. Like Alex said at the beginning of our conversation, we are a nation of animal lovers. A lot of us have lots of pets. We want to know that uh, animals are being taken... Uh, care of. Um, I just, before we uh, run out of time, I want to talk about this planned demonstration this weekend. Alex, can you give us a sense of what is being planned at Aintree? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're going down to Aintree. We're going to, we're asking for people to come and join us at night 9.30 from in, in front of the gates at Aintree. Uh, we're going to be there all day. We're going to be protesting. We're going to try to disrupt the race. And we're doing that to bring attention to the fact that We've got a broken relationship with animals in the natural world. You know, like that broken relationship is at the center of many of the problems we face. You know, like the way that we treat animals is responsible for the, the wildlife problems we're suffering from, the, the industrial farms that are polluting our rivers. You know, like all of these things are wrapped up in the fact that we should be a nation of animal lovers that treat animals well. So we're going to go to, to we're going to go there. We're bringing many more than 300 people. We've got lots and lots of supporters coming down. We're asking many more people to come and be there with us. And we're going to try to disrupt the race because we believe it's wrong. Uh, I just, I'm getting calls. Uh, we've got to move on, but I do want to. It's, uh, disrupting the race sounds dangerous to me, but let's let's see what it is in reaction. And Kevin, I want to just give you a, a final word as well about how you feel about that disruption to the race this weekend. 
Oh, sure, look, no, no one would ever discourage peaceful protests. You know, it's a right everyone has, but to, to you know, illegally disrupt the race, potentially putting horses and humans at risk is, is just silly. And I'm sure it won't happen. Um, look, the, the thing is that, uh, ironically, like myself and Alex, like are clearly on very different sides of this debate, Rosanna, but we'd actually have an awful lot of common ground. Like, I don't doubt the sincerity of him or his supporters in thinking they have the best interests of uh, thoroughbreds at heart. But look, we know thoroughbreds. This is a breed that we have created. We've curated over 300 years. They have very highly specialized needs. We know how to meet them. We know how to look after them. No one is resting on their laurels. We know the world is changing. But look, trust me, I'm on the ground day in, day out. The racing authorities, the people involved directly with the horses are doing everything they can to reduce risk to the lowest possible level we can. But such is life. We can never reduce risk to zero. Kevin, Alex, you've both put a point across your points very well this evening. Thank you so much for your insights. Thank well, you. next.